Jones. Hey, everybody, CigarFederation.com. We're here. Shit show. 25. Yeah. We're a quarter of a century. I can't believe we're still going because we got Moonbeam over here who fucking was spelunking last week and decided to not show up. And then this week, he doesn't even have the goddamn tobacco we're smoking, even though hey, being, hey, hey, being Ben muled that shit back all the way from Germany for us, he didn't even have it. So, I'm a little Somebody on edge. Somebody did not send it to me. That's Could complete not. horseshit. Could because not have. I have not lost anything you sent me. All right, let me ask you. How many mason jars of shit do you have behind you? Approximately. Uh, let's see. There's seven on a shelf, minimum. Okay. So, one, two, three. I probably got 70, 80 jars back here. Okay, 70, minimal. 80 jars. And how many of those are from your good friend Logan? Probably 73 or so. Okay, that's cool. All right, so let me just say, it's not like I'm stingy sending you shit. No, no. So if I'm I know spoiled. I fucking sent it, I fucking sent it. But there's a problem. Every time there's a show, I'm, I know the tobacco's behind me because I know you've sent it. Right. Which is why I don't worry about it. But I just literally twice before the show have gone through every jar behind me. All right. And every jar behind me are my only jars of tobacco. All right, man. And Sorry. nothing says Bentley and nothing says Asian spice, Asian honeydew or <laughs> pork, Asian you know, honeydew. Wow. So. Not back there. So right. I don't know what to say. All right. Well, are you going to at least smoke something else? Something got lost in translation. I'm going to smoke some Spectre. All right. Well, that's good. Well, we are going to be doing a show on that, so later. But, uh, so anyways, Bull Shark, how's it going, my friend? Are that's you prepared right. this week? Goddamn right. All right, there we go. So, for everyone who doesn't know what Bentley is, Bentley's a car. Um, and apparently they also got into the tobacco game. Uh, or at least someone's leasing the name. I'm not really sure. Ben could probably tell you more of the details. But when we were at uh, Inner Tobacco 2015 in Europe, um, we had the chance to catch up with a couple of the guys there. And they they make a cigar, actually. It's a uh, it's Bentley cigar. And it's made uh, actually by Hoya de Nicaragua, my good friend Juan Martinez. Um, but they also make pipe tobacco. So me and Bullshark kind of got all up in it, learning about their blends and stuff. So from my understanding, at least when we were at the Inner Tobacco, um, Basically, Bentley, at least when we were there, Ben, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there was three traditional blends, one mm -hmm. of them being English, which is the classic one. There was one English blend, which was the Old London, a.k.a. London Pine, which I'll be smoking, which is in English. And then there was the one that Jared completely butchered. It's not the Oriental Honeydew. It's uh, the Oriental Spice. Yeah. Whatever, man. Uh, whatever. Uh, which is a balcony blend. And then there was three um, Boone's Farm. There was Royal Vanilla, the Virginia Honey, uh, some of the Dulce Vita, and then the one was the Virginia Honeydew. We did not get any of the Boone's Farm, but we did get some of the classic one, the London Pine, and the Oriental Spice. Now, I am smoking the London Pine. My good friend Bull Shark is uh, smoking the Oriental Spice. And had Jared pulled his head out of his ass for 10 seconds, he would have been smoking the classic one. But we are we are not smoking all three. Our tripod is missing one fucking leg tonight. And it was last it was week, too. Classic? Is that the what it's called? The classic one. I know, that's what it's called. Like, if you vote on the bag, would have said classic? I, fuck, dude. You can't even read my handwriting anyways. I would have either put... No. Bentley Classic, or maybe just Classic One. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's familiar. something happened. Goddamn UPS fucking in there, fucking with my shit. So, anyways, I'm a little on edge. It took me a fucking hour to get the stupid baby down. Just it's been a hell of a day. So, anyway, someone else start talking. All right. So when we were there and entered tobacco at the Bentley booth, they actually were showcasing these all these tobaccos because they're new for this year. They been out before, and from what I understand, they've actually been um, re-blended twice. Now they're being blended by Dan Tobacco, and they came out 2015 in Europe. From what we, what I remember, I don't know, you might correct me if you remember different, 
supposedly in 2016 they're supposed to come to the United States. But nonetheless, I've actually you, you can find them on several of the uh, pipes, tobacco sites uh, across the pond, and they retail. They come in a hundred grand tins for around sixteen sixty eight, around about that. But this bad. is <clears throat> this is the little uh, baggies that they gave us right here, and <clears throat> yeah, like I said, they gave us a classic one and London pine and Oriental spice. <clears throat> And they said that it was actually available in Germany when they showcased it at, at Enter Tobacco, but it was going to be out to the rest of Europe for about a month. Yeah. So, which I was looking at, the actual, the sites I was looking at were actually in London. Um, so I know it's available in the UK, and it's been there for a while. So, like, when you go to uh, Tobacco Reviews and read up on it, if they if, it, if it's any reviews from 2015, that will be for this this blend, this version. Anything older than that, you can pretty much ignore because it's not what's out there now. Hmm. But anyway, the one that I chose is the Oriental Spice, and what they described is a full, full of spice and depth of flavor blend. Finest Oriental and Virginia tobaccos are carefully fermented in presses. A lot of eggs with a hearty flavor, Bentley Orange Oriental type. Uh, is a mild ready to rub blend, and it says it was name was changed from Orange Oriental to the Oriental Spice in 2015 with a reintroduction. But uh, what else is pretty cool about this was uh, when we were there, they were actually introducing uh, pipes. That Bentley has these two new pipes. Uh, they're freaking gorgeous, man! How you much remember this pipe? I I, I can't remember. Um. I thought they were like in around two hundred dollar range. I don't think they That's were that right. that expensive, two two fifty. But like one of them was a really uh, like a just gorgeous like piano black, just glossy finish. And like, but it was so was, black it looked green. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty. It was pretty tight. Yeah, it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. I'm actually uh, trying to go back to their. They have a um, a media website that they actually gave us. It's called Racing Black Classic is the name of it. Uh, and they also have one called Steelwork, which is um, it's kind of the same thing. It's going to be glossy black. It's a matte black finish. And then they have what's called the Wooden Treasure, which is um, your basic kind of, you know, non-rusticated briar, your brown, you know, non-rusticated. But each one of them have these steel caps on the, around the edge. So, like, you have your tobacco, your, your pipe here. It has a stainless steel rim all the way around it, and a little piece that comes down right here with Bentley on it. It's really cool. Cool-looking pipes. If I remember correctly, wasn't the metal on the top, like, weren't we saying it would be, like, easily scorched, or am I just completely not remembering things? Well, I don't remember. I remember, thinking, I remember thinking that, but, I mean, I could just be completely... Because we didn't talk too much about the pipes, but uh, mostly about the tobaccos. I just remember them being stunningly gorgeous. You know what I remember being stunningly gorgeous? <laughs> All the women's walking arounds in her tobacks. That's true. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. European women are just good looking. I mean, that's just That's just the truth of it. Am I the only one that's lost your video? Yeah. I, no, I, no, it's gone for everybody. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, Shooter just said it, too. Unbelievable. I can see you guys. That's correct. Yeah, but you, you just say Cigar Federation. But everyone, can you not see everyone? No, I can see Ben and I can see myself, but you're just a logo. Well, did I go out or did all of you fuckers go out? No, no, just you. Well, well, don't fucking worry about me, man. Um, don't worry about me. This could be the best show ever, now. I mean, I'm t I'm so good looking. I'll fucking put you clowns to shame. Fuck. Um, so, Jared, tell me about the classic one you're smoking right now. <laughs> <sighs> I gotta go find who to yell at because I I will guarantee you I don't have this tobacco. Maybe you've been that fucking name, getting high on your own supply, son. Does not even say, I can tell you what's behind me because I wrote every 10. 
nothing was that. Nothing. I swear. Well, if Moonbeam was actually spoken... I'm organized like crazy. The classic one, they describe it as, this is a natural five Virginia and Oriental tobacco blend. Well balanced, they mature in old English flat, uh, flake pipe tobacco presses. The, cla- the classic one is cut in ready to rub form, ready to smoke. This pipe tobacco has a soft, pleasant taste. It's a, uh, basically, it's a, um, it's almost like the Oriental Spice with no lot of Kia. It's a tur- it's got Turkish tobacco, Oriental tobacco from Virginia. Huh. That's the one I was thinking of that didn't have a lot of Kia. That's it. <clears throat> now I'm smoking the London Pine, which is made by Dan Tobacco. Um, and I now know why that I hate it so far. It's got a combination of Virginia's, Oriental Turkish, Latakia, and fucking Kentucky. You don't like the Kentucky? I just can't, man. I can't get down on it. I just can't get down on, like, fire-cured shit, man. I know people rage on that fucking, like, the Orlick, uh, like, dark, strong Kentucky and stuff. Dude, I just can't Good do stuff. it. I gotta I just, try it. I can't do it. I like that. Or the Mac Baron, um, you know, what do they call it? Old, dark, fired. I just can't fucking do it, man. Yeah, uh, that one, that one I haven't really enjoyed too much. Just kind of like, meh. Me. It just bites like a motherfucker, man. It's like I'm getting kicked in the face. You know what else bites like a motherfucker? What? This Oriental Spice. Oh, really? Dude, this London Pie is like biting me. It's like basically biting me about as hard as Jared fucking stabbing me in the back by not fucking holding on to his tobacco that I had sent him that I had smuggled all the way back from Germany. You can thank me later, Jared. Or, or go we're going to look. We're going to find. You're going to find this tobacco sitting in your house because I That's swear probably you true. It never made it here. It never made it here. I will guarantee it. I'll put some money on it. No, dog. You got five on it. Jared's mess with the Indo weed. He got five on it. I'm in just an incredibly weird mood tonight. I don't know about you guys. Because yeah, I don't know what the hell that just was. So, moving on from Logan just being goofy. Um, tell me, tell us about that um, London Pine. What's it like? Um, it kind of sucks. <laughs> One word. Really? <laughs> I mean, it, in the in the jar, it actually it's really weird because they claim it not to be like overly barren, or over. Or lo- they claim it to be loaded with Latakia. And when I smell it in the tin, like or in the jar, I guess, and it, it is kind of very Latakia. It's a very campfirey. Get a little bit of wood, some cedar tad bit of spice almost like kind of like a dominican-y kind of grassy hay to it but when you and it smells pretty good in the tent so i was like yeah this might be all right and uh i start smoking it and it's like i don't know maybe it was like some trickery latakia because i'm not getting hardly any latakia it's very soft when i actually am smoking the bowl and like i'm just getting the bite like a mother out of the virginias and out of that kentucky and like and I'm going slow, as you've watched. I'm not. And I also got my my favorite little, uh, you guys can't see it, but my favorite little pipe that keeps me from tongue bite is my little Peterson P-Lip. It's a Peterson dongle, like, what's the number on this fucking thing? 53. So it's got that little, instead of having the the bit or whatever, being straight on your tongue, it actually points to the roof of your mouth. Keeps oh, you from getting yeah. bit. Dude, I'm yeah. still getting bit Peter- like a motherfucker. Well... Yeah, I have to say this one's kind of the same way. It's hard for me, honestly, to pick out a lot of flavor in this. Like, um, yeah, it's not very good. Here, you know, I mean, I don't taste a whole lot, a lot of kid in this, to be honest. Um, I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of bitey. Like, I got to be really, really gentle with this one. I mean, because I puff on it too hard, man. It's it stings. You puff on that Indo weed too hard. Oh man, I was just on, and then I went off when I still there I am again. Oh, and you back on. There you go. Yeah, well, I don't know, man. Peter, I mean, Peter really wants to see your smiling face, Logan. He keeps probably me. not. Probably not you, Jared. Consider I'm going to give you massive shit this entire episode for not being fucking prepared. Um, Which and then is what fine. were you doing He's last fine. week, by the way? Your text message said you were spelunking. Or spanking. The, te- 
I was driving, so I, I texted real quick and put it down. I was out looking at a truck I was trying to buy, and it took a lot longer than it was supposed to. Well, did you buy the truck? And then I ended up not buying the truck because by the time I finally car faxed it, which I didn't do until I was driving it, which, yeah, my bad, but going to find out because I've never in my life had an issue with a vehicle. I've bought tons of used cars. Further north Texas, of course, you know, Brenham, Houston, Austin area. Hmm. Never had an issue. I've car faxed them later, no problems. Down here, holy shit. So it was a 2000 Ford Ranger Edge. <laughs> Four door, you know, pretty simple, yeah. cheap truck, 4500 bucks, Perfect cash. Why are we going to buy a truck? Well, I have no vehicle right now. We just share the car. Right. If I need a small truck, because i got a house, so i got to haul stuff. and I have a house, furniture. I don't have a truck. Well, you got an SUV. Oh, that's true. So I have a car, so it kind of gets a little iffy. It gets a little dicey. Okay, so you're looking at going so out and spending some cash money buy the truck. buying the yeah, truck. Okay. 76,000 miles. That's okay. low miles for a 2,000 Ranger. Perfect. So I drive a little over two hours away to Brownsville. So that's like and tip of Texas. Yeah, Brownsville is like, oh, 10 more minutes and I can go ahead and cross the border. I actually okay. cross through a checkpoint to go down there. You actually have to way cross back. through a checkpoint to go down there? On the way back. There's a oh, wow. checkpoint in the highway. Yeah, just a random one further in to make sure that it's an easy one. They walk the dog around, they look in your car, they say, okay, you're good. Well, you also go through a bunch of sensors that look for heat and chemicals and all this crap. So anyway... Get all the way down there, that's not bad, but it feels, I'm like, this is not 76,000 miles. This truck feels like a lot more. The suspension's saggy, the seat's real weak. I drive it a bunch, and finally I run the Carfax on it. The thing has more like 270,000 miles on it. And wow. the guy I'm trying to buy it off, I was like, what? He bought it like a month ago, apparently. Anyway, it was bought in Florida. Somewhere between Florida, it was fine. It came to Brownsville, Texas, and it lost 200,000 miles. Somebody switched the dash out because the speedometer of the truck was correct and working when I drove it. So somebody took the 270 dash, found a wrecked one with 76, swapped the dash. So I said, oh, keep the truck. I'm out. We're just going to call this a four-hour drive for dinner. He's, he was surprised. He said he didn't realize it. He didn't apparently know about Carfax. So he was supposed to go back to the guy he bought it off of because he half-assed knew him and say, hey, somebody ripped me off. Yeah, somebody ripped somebody off along the line between Florida and Brownsville. So, so that, he, let me just make sure I got this straight. So he actually went out and found a wrecked similar model truck replaced that was able to find one that had 76,000 miles like I mean I mean the stars aligned like on this whole deal and replaced the dash out to make it look like it had 200,000 less miles in it they either replaced the dash or they turned it back somehow I don't turn odometers back I know it's possible because this isn't digital this a 2000 still has the analog odometer but yeah, because I can look at the service records from the original owner in Florida. Right. And well, and see that and it had it, more than 76,000 yeah, miles. Yeah, it had 100-something thousand miles in 2008. The last recorded miles in the thing was 220 years ago, before it came to Texas. So whoever bought it from Florida, you know, bought a high-mileage truck, probably really cheap, and it's really bad down here because I've ran... The next two cars I ran had the same issue. I ran an 05 Avalanche, which I honestly hate the way they look, but it was cheap and had 130,000 miles on it. No, 250,000 miles. You've had this happen to you multiple um, times? I've, I've had probably four or five of the vehicles I was looking at down here with mileage discrepancies of 100 to 200,000 miles. So the moral of the story is, do not buy a vehicle in Texas. South Texas. Stay above Victoria, you're fine. You go below, because there's a. if you ever come down here and you're driving, you will pass 
tons of cars towing extra cars, one to two a piece, and they'll be in a line. Or they buy them at auction and impounds and all these other stuff, and they take them down to Mexico where they can sell them without, you know, Texas and U.S. titles and all this stuff we got. They can fix them real quick and sell them. Well, some of them half-ass fix them, bring them back over the border, retitle them, and make twice as much as they would down in Mexico with them. So stay above and Victoria? That's, that's always been, I've never got anything bad above Victoria. I even bought one out of Victoria that was perfect. I've never that's, had that issue until I got down here. Corpus and down, what, holy crap. Tons of them. I'm amazed how many cars have mileage discrepancies down here. So that damn I just said, you know what? I don't need a truck. I don't need a car. I'm going to get a bicycle, and I'm going to deal with it. I'm just going to go buy a brand new truck next year. Forget it. So hold on. Bicycle. So this is a 2004? Which one? The one that had mileage discrepancies, 2004 or 5? The first one was a 2000, even. Okay. Well, the one you the went one all the way to Brownsville. Brownsville. Brownsville yeah, it was for. a 2000. I was going to say, because my Jeep's a 2001, and it has a, a digital mileage thingy. I mean, your yeah. red flag yeah, should be... Jeep Cherokee's did. 2000 Ford Ranger, 76,000 miles. One it of happens. I found them. Don't belong. No, but it happens. With a Ford Ranger. A Ford yeah. Ranger or an S10... No. Everybody I know that owns those rags runs the up. piss out of them. Yeah. I had a 99 that was I bought in Victoria. Low miles. I paid 7000 bucks for it cash. Almost the same exact truck. Thing was clean. Didn't have a scratch on it. And when I sold it, it looked exactly the same. But when, when did you buy it? Like 2000? So that <laughs> one I bought a 99 and probably, no, it wasn't that new. It was late 2000s. How many fucking cars have you had? I think I'm on 17 or 18. 17 or 18 fucking cars? Holy I shit. I got a spreadsheet somewhere. Well, th four motorcycles and 14 cars or something. Between me and my wife, we don't have that many. We haven't had that many. No. Well, I started at one that cost me $750 even when I was 15. Then I just steadily went up and up and up each time selling one for more than I bought it for. So you're like the American Wheeler dealers. You're like American pickers of cars. I started at a 1960 Ford F100 custom cab pickup. Then I went back to a 1950 Studebaker pickup. And then I went back up and worked all the way to 2013 F-150. Wow. You ever see that show Wheeler Dealer? No. That doesn't sound familiar. You, it's a, what comes on the show here was the English uh, car show. They'll actually go buy an older older car, you know, kind of like what you were just talking about, like a 10-plus old car or whatever. And they take it and they kind of do these um, upgrades to it, like fix things. Like try to, try to find one that's not totally beat to shit. But one right. that's been, you know, lovingly used. When they come, they, you know, they change out the things that need to be repaired, make it a little bit nicer, and they try to sell it after they get done with it and make a little bit of profit on it. That's the mm -hmm. whole premise of the show. And now they got one that's called Wheeler Dealer where the guy travels around. And, like, like, they just have one in Texas. And they started, I can't remember, I think it started in El Paso, with, like, a couple of grand, bought a vehicle, Went like the Corpus Christi. He traded that to a uh, for a better vehicle. So uh, basically, he trades his, all this, uh, trades a vehicle. It gets a much better vehicle at the end of the show. But uh, it's a really cool premise. But it's what reminded me <laughs> talking about. I started out with a seven hundred fifty dollar yeah. vehicle. Now I got a brand new whatever you know. That's that's actually what I did. I just worked my way up. Same with the house. I started with the seventy six thousand dollar house, and then I worked my way up. Just Buy one, fix it up, sell it more than you paid. Step up, fix it, sell it more than you paid, and just keep doing that. That's, That's just pretty much what I kept doing. God. 
this thing fighting the piss out of me, dude. Dude, I don't like it, man. I'm like really thinking about recusing myself. Yeah, I was really thinking about recusing myself and going and getting a cigar. That wow. puff right there just okay. it bit me worse than anything I've ever had in my life. Like it, it almost made my my eyes water. I mean, dude, I I, I it's wow. not even enjoyable. It's not. I mean, it's just, this is like a cranky, they should have named this the cranky old housewife. I feel like what I'm getting with this one is, is a whole, it's almost like a straight Virginia with a little bit of Orientals in it. And I detect no lot of Kia whatsoever. Yeah, I don't, I mean, dude, it's just, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just done with you. Wow. It looks like you lucked out, motherfucking Moonbane. I guess. God. <laughs> this might be the worst shit we've ever smoked. At least on this show. Not saying we've smoked everything under the sun, but. Good Texas. Kids, let me just tell you. This is why. A little lesson for all you. Ah, masters. Coke makes it worse. Oh, dude, I told you, man. Sodas make it worse. Oh the sugar, God. bro. Oh, this, the sugar, bro. This is, probably, this is probably the shortest conclusion to a pipe tobacco we've done. <sighs> I know. This is the moral of the story there, youngsters, is that when you no. see a product like Bentley, right? They make really nice cars. They're high end. You know, most of you'll never have one. I'll never have one. And you see them license the name to something else in a very obscure industry that they have nothing to do with. Chances are it's going to be shitty. A tongue feels like it's got leprosy. <laughs> God damn, that's that strong, dude. I want the Coke. Holy shit, <laughs> that was way worse. Oh, don't ever do that. Well, so Ben, what do you? I mean, we can still talk. I mean, I'm gonna, or we can I'm just gonna... say fuck this noise and call it good. I don't really care. But I'm either gonna fire something else up, but I'm not smoking that bullshit no more. Me neither. I'm not. I'm not doing that no more. I, I've got to fix my palate now. And it's gonna be a job. Okay. <laughs> that? Old iron side, I don't want that. That was just <laughs> not good. No, it was terrible. I know what I'm gonna smoke. That's bad. Yep. Oh yeah, ready rubbed. This shit, dude, I swear to God, man. This this little fucker's growing on me. I love it. That dude. stuff is good. Does anybody want a sample of no, don't even give that show. Bentley away. London Pine. I've got a little something here if you want no, some. No, no. Negative. So the only person chatting in the room is Shooter. So if you really want to torture Shooter like that, he might go for it. Hey, man. it's all, Dude, tobacco's just an experience, bro. That's all it is. He's smoking some of that pot latch right now. So dude, that shit is better. money. That stuff is mm -hmm. amazing. I, if I wish I had some of that, I'd be smoking that right now. But I'm going to go with this. I'm going to smoke some Panzaiance. Oh, you Panzaiance. Jerry, what are you smoking? Nothing? I didn't even light up. I just got to chat and talking. I didn't God even like my damn it. Specter. I swear to God. Unbelievable. Who right the here fuck are you? <laughs> busy. That's who I am. Busy. What the fuck are you busy with? Everything. Spelunking. Spelunking. Look at this. I said I was going to get stuck, I think is what the text said. It, it pretty it much said spelunking. I we tried to it decode later. it. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. What did I tell him? Spanking? We're spanking something? Well, I mean, how Let's are you see. expecting to leave your job at, say, 5 o'clock? I and left early. I was going to say, because if it's literally a two-hour round trip, you wouldn't have. No, I left early enough that I could have made it back. I was like, shit, I need to tell Logan I'm not going to make it. And then... You text is like, oh, shit. And then basically you just you. said, you know what, fuck him. Oh, I said, went to go get struck. Won't make it. Struck, yeah, that's what it was. Struck yeah. what it was. We didn't know what the hell you were talking about. I don't know how the S got, but I was trying to drive down the Highway 77 past, there's literally a Border Patrol SUV at every single crossover. Seriously? Seriously, and they have their front little spotlights on. They're out in the, uh, you know, the gumballs up there. The little, they have yeah. the spotlights on. They're just sitting there. 
And wow, if they didn't have a, a border patrol, there was a state trooper. Y'all really don't trust Mexicans down there, do you? Oh, if you get close to the border, I mean, you'd be amazed if anybody makes it over here because there's so much law enforcement everywhere. But what's the amount of it. illegal immigrants that come in from Mexico every year? I don't know the number, but I mean, it's, it's pretty a, big. It's a sizable amount. Like one no, trillion? A, <laughs> one metric buttload <laughs> billion? I, I mean, don't know I the would, number, I'd put it a what? Lot. Would you put it in the several hundred of thousands? I don't know if we could say that many because that's definitely going to find out. Going off of that, do you actually know that uh, where the what term buttload came from? Metric buttload? I have no idea. Metric buttload? I don't know where I, I read this at, but it just came up randomly. A buttload is actually a term that was used back in the old Dutch trader days, you know, like the East Indian Company and all yeah. that. That shit, you know. But a butt was a load of wine. Really? So a butt load is a load of wine. Yeah, it's like six giant liters or six giant vats of wine is one butt or something like that. So when you put it in the cart and you took it, it was a butt load. No shit, that's for real. Swear to God. Wow. Part I learned little. something interesting today. Along those same lines. So in the Cigar Federation store, shameless plug, uh, we launched a cigar named Gringo. G-R-E-E-N, go. Very clever that? play in words, you're welcome. But I learned this today, is that the actual Mexican-Spanish slang term for this is rumored to be created during the Mexican War when the Mexicans would often tell the American forces that were generally dressed in green to get the hell out of their town by saying Gringo. Okay. Interesting. Well, here's, let's see. At least during uh, Obama's tenure, so almost eight years, two and a half million illegal immigrants have settled in the U.S. But does it say from where? Or just in general? Well, the only illegal immigrants that just walk over here are from Mexico. There's a lot of, well, yeah, I guess you're They've got those crazy Canadians trying to swim over. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to go past the... Hey, it's way easier to swim the Rio Grande than it is Lake Michigan or Lake Erie or those this freezing cold bodies of water. This is true. So it's quite a few. This is so much better, but it's still got a funky taste to it because my mouth has got that Billy leprosy. You got that funky skunky. Yeah, I'm wondering well, I guess I'm, enjoy this. I'm pretty glad there's no Bentley stacked up in my case behind me. I know, you probably smoked and realized how shitty it was, and then you're just hiding it. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Now, I would say if I had something that really just sucked, and I can tell you for sure that, that nothing back there is named that. Not That's sure right. what happened, but... There we go. That's good better now. Whew. That was terrible. I mean, that's like nightmarish terrible. I have they should stay in the cigar. Couple. They should stay in the car business. Yeah. Let I me just say that's not the most high-end luxury pipe tobacco I've ever smoked in my life. No. You know what I'm excited to try though? It's new Bingo slices. Dude, I I sent you that, didn't I? Yeah, but I didn't buy it though. I don't know, man. That looks kind of gimmicky. That's why I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and see. I don't trust these reintroduction tobacco. I don't trust them worth a shit either. No. I I'm going to wait. I mean, I mean, tobacco changes year after year, crop to crop, field to field. I mean, who knows if they even have the right damn recipe? You That's know what I mean? Supposedly it is the, the recipe. So, and it's still out there. It's available. So, I mean, it's not selling out and none of that shit, so, I don't know. I was really See, hoping on Pipe Stud that I could have picked up those tens, but I was too slow on the draw. Oh, I got an email about that, that other batch we were talking about. Oh, I know. I thought, I mean, was I out of line there? I don't, I, I mean. I don't know, because, I mean, honestly... I don't buy a whole lot of vintage tobacco. 
So I don't really, honestly, I don't know what the price is right on that on that stuff. But you I, bought a lot more of it than I have, so I don't. You would know right. better. I mean, I think. I don't know. I mean, I think I was fairly fair. I think so. Oh, bitches. Well, this is the most anticlimactic pipe dummies we've ever had in, ever. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate it uh, there, Bentley. Well, if they would let us test drive some cars, we could probably give them a little better score there. Yeah, I, it almost be a half a star. Yeah, that's... Wow. So, from one to five... Negative one. Yep. Pretty horrible. I would honestly rather not smoke anything than to smoke that. Like, I would just say, uh, you know what, I'll, 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 I don't think I'm going to smoke a pipe today. I don't know, man. He's got some age GLP shit on pipe studs, son. Really? I mean, not super aged, but... He's got the Robusto. Oh, that's pretty good. I that's like that. 2004. I think that's what mine's from. Or earlier. I need to start looking on this site a little bit more. It's a standard mixture. Okay, well, here, okay, here's a good one. Dunhill Murray's era standard mixture. 55 bucks. And what did I say for my price? 35. No, I didn't. I said 50. Was it? Are you sure? I swear. Go back. You'll see. The other thing was 50, and I said 35. That, that was, was overpriced. That was Holy shit, he's got some targe from uh, 1970. What does he have? Rat Rays Highland Targe mm. from 1970. Wow. $110. You know one that have I kind of would like to try, but then it's kind of weird. Is it Aaron Moore mixture? I've seen it, but I've never. I think I sent you guys some of it, didn't I? No. Oh, Westminster. Saw sold out. Fuck. What side are you checking out there? Pipestud.com. That's it. That's a Barbary Coast. That stuff's really good. There's some Black House from Pennington 2011. Well, sold out. Yep. Damn, I wouldn't mind having that painting here. Yeah. Dude, there was this place called Knoxville Cigar that had amazing selection of pipe tobacco. And they had their own blend, um, their own, uh, this is their house blend. I cannot remember the name of it. But they had one tobacco that was insanely famous that I wish somebody would bring back. It's called what's called Boar's Head. Man, I heard it was unbelievable. Really good. Yeah. One day, it's a frog mort. I saw now. There's some good shit on here. I mean, it's just hard. I wish it was just a better website. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just the website is like hard to navigate. I'm not sure if I could smoke this this stuff. I got such a funk in my mouth right now from that. Dude. I know. This Penzance isn't even tasting good. Mm. Like I I really this this doesn't taste right. Oop, a Dunhill limited edition. Nope, it's old. Dunhill salt. 
Dunhill sold. No. Rare first year production red bark. 325. I'm alright. I don't really get off on the pipes that look like vaginas. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Which look one? on pipe stud <laughs> and then go down to Joseph Scudo standing freehand straight grain unsmoked for eight ninety five. Tell me that doesn't look like a fucking bajay. Wait, hold on. Ooh. You uh, see what I'm saying? No, I got stopped. Ooh. I saw that done handle. I was like, ooh. I looked, it got sold. I, I don't know what I'd say that looks like. 875 bucks? Mm-hmm. Wait, where am I at here? You said, who was it? Joseph Skoda, freehand saucer. Oh, the saucer one? No, man, it's no, the, the freehand straight grain. Okay, yeah, there you go. Of one up. It looks Ooh. like a fucking Veta J. Oh yeah, that does a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I, see how I, you could enjoy smoking that. Well, for eight hundred ninety-five bucks, you better enjoy it if you got it. Well, I'll have to say this quarter century episode of Pipe Dummies has probably been the worst one. <laughs> oh, I would agree. We have oh, nothing Lord. to talk about. We're sitting here looking at pipes. We might as well just be on a goddamn hangout. People that are watching this shit, you must be die hard motherfuckers. Shooter. Shooter! Shooter's motherfucking tour. Yeah, I got nothing. Looks like a vagina with herpes warts. He kind of does, man. That would be Shooter. <laughs> Shooter's tough. Mm. Yeah, I need to sign up bad. for this guy's mailing list. How to order. And the other thing I hate is the fact that you got to... You got to email the motherfucker to order. Like, you should just have it hooked to a Shopify store. It's just much easier. Yeah. Guess as much shit as we talk about cigar chat. I don't think this has ever happened, has it? No. <laughs> yeah. A third doesn't get the tobacco, and two thirds can't smoke the rest of it. I can't even. I'm. I honestly, I can't even enjoy this ready rub. That's a shame. I know that's probably that like my surprise. Stuff. Tobacco of 2015 for me. Like your least favorite? No. One of my most How favorite. How good the ready rubbed was. Yeah. It was good a, surprise. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> How are you talking about the shittiest thing you smoked this year? That just, well, in 2015, the shittiest thing I smoked, I don't remember. I didn't really smoke nothing at this level. This, this Bentley tobacco has thrown me for a loop. I can't even think right Huh. I guess those Europeans just like to smoke shitty pipe tobacco. Because that shit was not good. No, what? Not at all. I mean, not, I can't even... Like, just, there was no redeeming quality about it. No. Hmm. Yeah, and I, this ready to rub just doesn't taste right. Don't taste good. I also want this Penzance, and it's not even, like, good. I just kind of want to put it out. And if you're saying that about Penzance, and you must be drunk or getting high on your own supply. Or just smoke some Bentley. Dude, Bentley. Bentley blows ball sack. That's their new, that's their new blend. Well, I guess we uh, did a service to all our, 
our viewers because if it ever does hit the U.S., don't bother. No. Yep. Because apparently it's not going to be a cheap tobacco. No, it'll be expensive. I was wondering how much the license fee was to use the name Bentley. I don't know. The pipe I feel like cool. it's got to be expensive. Yeah, right, I would or am I wrong expect, about that? No, I would expect it to be for sure. I don't even know how you'd turn a profit. I don't know how you could even approach Bentley to ask them to use their name. You know, Bentley has a lot of cologne, too, for men. Oh, really? Do they just license out their name, though? Do they not give a fuck? Yeah, they license it out. But I tell you what, the cologne is really good. <clears throat> Especially Bentley Intense. I have that. It's really good. The thing, though, is, if you think about it, like, like everyone can tell you, I think, unless you, like, have no sense of smell, can tell you what a, if a clone smells good or doesn't, right? Yeah. Or if a piece of clothing looks good or doesn't, or is made well or made cheaply, right? I mean, I think most people can do that. But when it comes to cigars, no one, I mean, they can't, like, really confirm if the shit's good or bad. Unless they have somebody there who's actually smoked a shit ton of pipe tobacco that can actually knows what they're doing, how would they ever actually validate whether the product that they're releasing under the Bentley name is good or bad? There's no way to know on that. On that, you just have to try it and see for yourself. Right. Well, exactly. But I mean, uh, does Bentley get... have an in-house fucking tobacco guy that knows what a good pipe tobacco and a good cigar is? Oh, I'm sure not. No. Exactly. So that's what I'm just saying. Is like, it, I think licensing the name for tobacco-related stuff. I mean, you could say it's the best cigar in the world. And it'd be shit. I don't think anybody would ever know, you know, from the company because I mean, they're not going to know. Right. Nope. The consumer has just rely on three dumbasses to tell them on a pipe show. Don't do it. Yeah. It'll leave your mouth with herpy bites. Ben's living proof. Yeah, I know. It's fucked up. But I tell you, you know what? Here's a, here's another slight segue. Or that was a segue into this. The, have y'all had, do y'all have, I know, Jared, you only have like one pipe, right? So. But do you have a pipe that you had? It's a filter pipe that you converted to non-filter. Yes. Does it work well? Not really. No. This right here is a filter pipe, right? The Savadellis have the balls of filter system. Yeah, the you know the authors do. Yeah, it, which works really well, right? Yeah, I mean it mops up most of the goop pretty good. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, I I'm not a fan of the filter because I always forget about it, right? <clears throat> I always so, leave it in there, and then it stinks up the pipe. Oh, yeah. It, that happened to me. Or you sit there trying to push a damn pipe, pipe liner, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Why won't that go in yep. there? Yep. And, you, and I did I did that a lot. And then I, It's just another thing you have to buy, too. Right. So I, I could I bought the converters for pipes and cigars to put it in here. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I might just say, fuck it, and use balls of filters. Just another thing you got to buy. That's the part I don't like. I know. See, right now I can't get this fucking pipe cleaner into the hole. Like it won't go. But a minute, I swear to God, I just went a minute ago. But now the other side of the cleaner, it won't go in there. You know, one thing I want to get, and just purely out of my own curiosity, is Eric Nording makes a pipe, and it's a cheap fucking pipe. It's like thirty bucks, and. It's kind of like the Drew Estate concept, the Suge concept, where it's got like the chamber that you can put tobacco in or put something in to kind of that soups up the goop, you know. Well, he, it's a very similar design, obviously way cheaper you're made, but where you put in that void is volcanic clay. Yeah, that's yeah, I've seen that. I'm wondering if that works worth a fuck. I don't know. I'm beginning to. I mean, I don't know if it's worth a $30 investment to find out, but I'm just, Why not? I don't know, I'm, I'm curious. Do it for the viewers. I should, because I need, like, the problem is all the pipes that I have are, like, pretty nice. And I'm not going to just, like, go out and, like, hack about a pipe in the car or in the garage. Well, I guess I'm in the garage now. 
But like when I'm mowing the yard, I just kind of want a beater pipe. And I think it might be a good beater pipe. It's possible. I mean, I see that with as a corn cob, but that would be interesting to see if it how that is though. You know, I'll tell you a pipe that looks interesting that I kind of want to try out. And when I watch a lot of uh, YouTube reviewers over in, in uh, across the pond in Europe, I see a lot of them smoking. It's one of those falcon pipes. And that What's a, falcon? They got it's like a pipe, kind of like these sugays. But where the bamboo is at is like a it's like a stainless steel shank, and mm-hmm. almost kind of looks like it's it's chambered, almost kind of like a heat sink of a computer. It's, it's oh really? Yeah, it's kind of it's cool looking, and it, it's supposedly it's huge in over there in Europe. It's a huge uh, pipe. So what's it called? Falcon. The, a falcon. Yeah. I'm looking to see if they have them on a pipe of cigars. That's what I was looking right now too. Yeah, Falcon oh, Pipes. Don't, don't forget to pick up your Peterson 2016 St. Patrick. Oh, here we go. Dude, it's like Pipe Event. It's like the second banner, dude. What? Dude, like, go to Pipes and Cigars. I'm waiting for the second banner. I don't wait for shit. The new banner, dude. They've got, yeah, dude, they got them right here for $59. What the fuck? Dude, That's I'm looking good. at it right now, dog. Wow. And you can get. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, yeah, dude. It's totally, like, interchangeable. It's just like the Suge. But they've been around forever. Like, a long time. Yeah, these have got the stems that are all bent, like, fucking fucked up looking. I know what you're talking about now. But they, I'm telling you, man, you watch some of those uh, pipe tobacco reviewers and stuff on YouTube and shit, and you'll see a lot of them over there will be smoking a damn falcon, especially in the, uh, the U.K., you know, Wales, England, and Scotland, and then Northern Ireland, which we don't count, and then rest of the real Ireland. Yep, they have they smoking those Falcons. Hmm. You know what they should be smoking is Dunhills. Mm-hmm. I'm due for one of those. I'm all interested now in these Falcons. Man, I'm so happy this freaking radio rub is tasting normal now. <sighs> the corkscrew aluminum stem system twits condensing and trapping moisture below the interchangeable briar bowl. And it's actually an American made pipe, which is interesting. Yeah. Are you going to cause me to have to go out and buy one of these, Ben? Yeah. I fucking hate you. Would it be weird if you didn't? It'd be fucked up if you didn't. Like you make your own one up. Look, you sell the bowls and sell the stems. I know. So you can make your own shit up. Oh. Oh, they got a Meerschaum line one. That's cool. Out of stock, of course. I'm always fascinated by the Peterson St. Patrick's Day pipes. I usually buy them every year. You really? Yeah. I don't know why, but I do. This one, this year's looks pretty good. I always say I'm going to do it, and then I, I don't. Let's see what Ross's monthly blend is here. February Dude, 2006. I don't Probably horrible. All sorts. All sorts recalls the flavor of old fashioned layered candy. What? Combination of sweet golden Virginia and black Cavendish. This blend is finished with a light vanilla note and a hint of mild liquors out for an intriguing taste that will take you back in time. A time in hell. The room note is light and pleasant, lightly sweet, and the finish is body clean. If you enjoy this, sorted confections that share this blend's name, you have to try all sorts. So that was a candy back in the day, all sorts. I don't know, dog. Must be Yankee thing. I've never heard of it. Yeah, me either. All right. Well, we're gonna end this train wreck. So, I mean, not that you need to say anything, Ben, but or Ben, shit, uh, bull shark. But let's just be real. What was the 
what was the verdict on the the old uh, Oriental Spice? No. Just no. No. <laughs> no. Just no. Just say no. I mean, I'm not going to even give it a rating because let me just say is that after smoking it, you smoke a bowl of Penzance and you're dumping half of it out because it doesn't taste right because you don't want to smoke anymore. That's Ooh. what I rate it. Yeah. That's a whole new rating that we don't even have. That's just like... I mean, that's just pure tobacco profiteering. Yeah, this is like coronal ejection matter. Like It's not even a star. It's like the shit that a, a star farts out. It's just that's how bad it is. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know about that, but it's just not good. If you buy this and you watch this show first and then you go and buy it, I have absolutely no fucking sympathy for you. So don't come whining to me if you buy this shit after watching this and it sucks donkey dick. Don't come whining to me. You will not find any sympathy here. Nor will you get any from Bullshark. Fuck no. I will uh, berate you. Like I would rather hang out with my in-laws for three weeks in a foreign country than smoke this again. Like a third world country? I love third world countries, man. Like, I would even go, I mean, even post it up on like a beach, having to hang out with them for multiple weeks in a row. I would rather do that than fucking smoke this pipe tobacco again. Mm. Yeah, that's a rating right there. No, it's no good. On that note, we're gone. So I'll next week, UPS. I'll be the same. I'll be the same. Um, and next week, I haven't got anything scheduled yet, but we'll be back next week, same time, hopefully with a better, hopefully a better pipe tobacco. Um, until then, it's Pipe Dummies, episode twenty-five, quarter century. Just quit watching us because we suck. Later, guys. <laughs> Fuck off.